Hey everybody, Haku here with the third part of my 2022 Anime Awards. This is going to be the waifu of the year. This is something that is... I am risking cancellation or at the very least annoying comments with this one, but I really wanted to have this as part of my Anime Awards. So this is going to be best girl or best boy. I'm going to be gender inclusive when I say waifu. Uh, gender does not matter. Boys count to this award too. So if you're going along with this and saying who your favorites were of the year and stuff, you can also like, again, doesn't matter. Guys or girls, they both count. In fact, I was like, you know, maybe there should be at least one guy in the list. So here's the thing. I'm risking cancellation and stuff because... I swear that I made this list and almost all of these characters are either characters that are not human or would qualify as lolly. Maybe, may, again, the definitions are so stretched at this point. I've seen Yor from Spy Family called a lolly. I've seen Bayonetta called a lolly. So words don't have meaning anymore. But either way, I made this video and I should probably go over some of the criteria like I've been doing for other awards. I was only allowed to pick one per show and in addition to that when I think of waifu, when I think of best girl, what my idea of that is is if I was in the position of the main character or if I was a self-insert in like a position adjacent to the main character and this was kind of like a game with romance options, or a visual novel with romance options, which route am I taking? And that's kind of how I view it. It really doesn't always even line up for a character that I would be romantically or physically interested in. It's more just vibes. It's more just characters that I really connect to and really like. And so with that, before I get into the top 10 leading up to the winner, I have to give a shout out to Pekora from Joshin Chan Dropkick X because she's a character that I really, really, really love. And I always question myself. I'm like, I love this character so much as a character, but she isn't up here. And I'm like, is that a mistake? Should she, should I be counting her for this? And also, I want to shout out Ashina Grizarika from Shoke Shoujo no Virgin Road because she was originally in my 10th place, but then I was like, there was somebody else that I was like, no, I have to replace her. I have to kick her out of the top 10. So shout out to her. She she would have been a human. She would have been a non-lolly human. But I had to kick her out of the top 10 for someone else. <laughs> 10th place is Carla from Konohila Mendoxai. I had to put her in 10th place. I just had to. I kept rethinking my decisions and rethinking my decisions, and I'm like, she has to make it. She would be so fun to be around. I think that she would be incredibly fun to be around. I'm kind of realizing that I might have a soft spot in my heart for toxic girls that would be rude to me. And I love her deadpan expressions and emotionless voice a lot of the time. She's just a very fun character, and I appreciate it a lot. Ninth place is Gekka from Prima Dolls, yet another non-human uh, lolly character, and she is one of Prima Dolls' most heart-rending characters, and honestly, with Prima Dolls, that's saying something. She has a heart-breaking story, but also just this really interesting gray morality compared to a lot of the others, and one of the most interesting perspectives from the characters that we see. So I like her because of all of that. Of course, the voice is good, the character design's good and all of that. But she was a character that I really, even though I like the characters in general a lot in Prima Doll, she was one that I felt like after getting deeper into her character throughout the course of the season, I connected with most. Honestly, I was thinking about this, who's waifu, who's best girl? And then I'm thinking the, the side boob robot from like when I'm trying to pick one from each series I'm like oh the side boob robot from episode one and then I'm like no of course I go for the lolly robot instead so we are two for two thus far on not human at least <laughs> Come, 
人さんいい匂いしますねこういうのってシスコンって言うんですっけ漠然と成功することばかり考えてると辛くなっちゃいますもんね私は高校中退です Eighth place finally gives us a human with PA san from Bochi the Rock I really like her design a lot I like her character I know a bit about her from the future from spoilers in the manga that I'm not gonna say but I just like her character I like her personality she is a high high level background character and it's wild that she is just She actually is just kind of a background character, and yet I am so like PA san brain rot that I'm like top 10. Amazing. Love her. So,、uh, yeah, eighth place, we finally get a human. And we return straight to the non human train with Noma Rune in seventh place. Noma Rune also being the only guy I put on the list because look at him, he's gorgeous, he's amazing. He is presented as the best waifu option. So he's from Fotokuno Guild, Noma Rune from Fotokuno Guild, and he is a fairy. And he's great, he's amazing, and he is presented as the best waifu option. To the main character. The main character is like thinking about all the other girls in the series, and it's like, No Maroon really, really is the best option. Like, he is presented as the best option for a reason. He's amazing. He's great. The only problem is that he comes in too late in the series, and I would have wanted to have seen more of him, so I really hope that we get a season two and we get more No Maroon. <laughs> Sixth place is Doberman from Ark Knights, which is yet another non human and also another PA San esque choice. I spent the whole season, she didn't really get a ton of attention. I spent the whole season like, where's more Doberman? Are we gonna get more Doberman? I love her. I, I want more of her. I love her eyebrows. That is the main selling point for me for Doberman. Her eyebrows are amazing. I love them. They're like so cute. And the fact that it's like, of course, they're giving her the dog esque design with the eyebrows similar to like Doberman markings and then like the choker similar to a collar. I just, I really love her design. I think she's great. Great. I thought she was amazing toward the beginning of the series, and I was just wanting more of her the whole time. Also, when it came to Ark Knights, it was either going to be her in this position or Hoshigoma, who is also incredibly attractive and amazing, and I was fighting so much with myself on whether I wanted to put Hoshigoma here or her. They both are kind of like 1A and 1B, tied for best of Ark Knights, and probably would have been sixth place either way. <laughs> In fifth place is one of the main characters from Tensei Shitara Kendeshita. It's Fran. I love her. She's amazing. She had such a good story. Her story's so good. She's so great as a main character. Her personality's great. Her design is great. Her relationship with the other main character is great. I really thought that she was so cool and that I loved her backstory. I love what she did and how she developed in the story. I thought that everything about what was done in her story was just so good. She's so cute. She's so funny. She's so cool. She is just, she does everything and she's amazing. And you will probably have already seen by now how she fared in the best character award. <laughs> In fourth place is Los Sensei or Lu Christus? Ru Christus? There are like so many different translations I've seen from My Hotsky, Rei Miki, or Dawn of the Witch. She was amazing. I love her voice. She might actually be, depending on whether or not witches count as humans, I'm not sure if they do. In Dawn of the Witch slash、uh, Zero、uh, Hajimaru Maho no Show. I don't know if witches count as humans in this franchise or not. So she might be our second. <laughs> We're at fourth place, our second human on the list. Maybe if she counts, she might not even be human. So she definitely fits in the Lali Baba 
act here, I think. Given that she is an old lady, she speaks and acts like an old lady, but she looks really young. And she, not, I don't know if this counts as spoilers or not, but the main character of the series, even though he has the choice of this, you know, like, big titty cowgirl who really, really, really likes him, he is like, Los Sensei is... Lo Sensei is the way to go. That's the route. And so I wasn't a huge fan of the main character, but I'm like, at least he had his priorities straight in one way. Lo Sensei is indeed the way to go. She is indeed best girl. Her voice is amazing. I love the design with the hair, the like purple with the eyes and the coat and everything is so good. And then the forehead. Oh, can we talk about the forehead? Lo Sensei is amazing. She is really funny as well. She's a good character, a good like teacher mentor character so yeah big big win for los sensei fans In third place is Sazanka from In the Heart of Konoichi Tsubaki. She's another really, really great character. She is endlessly entertaining. Probably our second or third human on the list, but she has the heart of an angry chihuahua. She is angry chihuahua anime girl personified. I wanted to try to find a picture of her to use, but I couldn't find any good one of her just raging angry. It's so fun. I love her character a lot. She reminds me so much of Shirai Kuroko from... Uh, Railgun. She is exactly Shirai Kuroko. And I say that in an endearing way. I'm not trying to be derogatory saying that the character is basically the same, but she really is. With the Onesama stuff, her obsession with Tsubaki, similar to Kuroko's obsession with Misaka, um, they really are very similar characters. But I say that in a really good way because when I was really, really young, one of the first anime I watched and really enjoyed was Railgun, so characters that remind me of that will always have a special place in my heart. But like I said, she's very funny, she's endlessly entertaining, one of the highlights of the show to me. In second place, our runner-up is Kate from Shadow's House Season 2. Kate is so good. I thought about, for my choice for Shadow's House, I thought about choosing the Bells because I'm like multiple Shadow Girls, but I am just a sucker for Kate's character design. That might sound superficial, but it just speaks to my soul. The darkness being like a being made of shadow with the black and white and red. Black and white and red is just such a cool, like color scheme to go with and like her dress is so cool looking so I love her character design in addition to that when it comes to her character itself she's so smart and like kind and caring she does so much for the other characters and for the ideas of the series in general she does so much to help others even when it comes at cost to herself, even when she could benefit from the harm of others or the continued subjugation of others, she is fighting for the sake of others, even if it comes to at the expense of herself. And it turn it like makes her into a really, really cool character. And again, just like the brains and the smarts of having to plan and survive and try to do what they're doing in this world is really cool. So again, Another very good character whose character design I'm a sucker for and who also I think is just an incredible character. And you know this train runs on forehead and vibes because our winner, waifu of the year, is Kurumi or Chestnut from Lacorus Recoil. She is amazing, indispensable as a character to the series, super funny, love her design. She is really, really great. Now, since I have all your attention, I'm going to talk about the Kurumi age theory, because there's arguments over whether she is super young as she looks, but weirdly, strangely experienced and mature and intelligent, or is she actually like 30, but 
is super young looking. And I think not only is her being 30, but super young looking, much funnier. I think that makes the jokes surrounding her character a lot funnier. Not only is that a funnier way to interpret the character, but also it's a way to interpret the character that makes more sense. So here's the thing. They say that she's been hacking for like a decade. And again, we've seen that she's really smart. She's really talented at all of this and really mature. And she always considers and talks about herself as if she's older. So if she is younger, then she would have to just be taking over her mantle from somebody else, which could still be a possibility. But it just feels like with everything else we've seen, we have seen other characters who are kind of savants or rather characters who are prodigies, but they also had just tons of training from childhood. And it just makes less logical sense for her than if she had, if she's 30 and she's just been doing this for a decade, given that the voice actor also recorded with the what they said was the adult team of voice actors and also the voice actor said that when they got the role that the director told them to play the character as if the character was in their late 20s or early 30s so that's how the character is played in addition to that so i just think logically from what we are given and the fact that she literally says uh that she's 30 but like the other characters treated as a joke i think that she actually is. She's telling the truth. She is actually really old, and that's the joke. The joke is that she's really old and nobody believes her, and I think that's really, really funny. It makes the whole series funnier to view her that way. Uh, but yeah, also, in addition to that, like I said, her design's good. Uh, forehead and vibes, I just really, really like her character a lot. It spoke to me the most from all the anime I watched in 2022. So now, there you have it. Waifu of the Year is Kurumi. And for any of you who want to tell me what your favorite waifus and or husbandos, again, either way, I had a guy on the list for me, either way is good. Just tell me what you thought down in the comments. Like if you did like the video. Subscribe if you want to for much more on the channel, anime and otherwise. And if you'd like to talk on Twitter, we can. If you'd like to talk on Discord, the server is free and open for anyone. All you got to do is ask and, I'll give, er, and I can give you a link. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can hit join down below to become a member. Go to patreon.com slash haku of the tubes or a link will be in the description to become a patron. Patrons and channel members get shout outs at the end of every video, get one piece a bit early. So huge, huge thank you to them. Thank you to patrons and members, chosen regular Evan Hawley, Magical Girls, Efernono and Smaller Dog, Cherryton Student, David Langstaff, Slayer Candidates, SG and Stan Cedar, Pure Element, Pate Ardealo. Thank you all so, so much for your support and thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.